Welcome to a new episode of TTG Conversations 5 Questions video series. In this episode, we will be looking at how the travel and tourism industry can move on from this crisis through innovation. And taking us through this topic is Mario Hardy, CEO of the Pacific Asia Travel Association, more, uh, more known to us as PATA. Yeah? So Mario hates uh, PATA as CEO since 2014. He has over three decades of experience in corporate development and investment in technology and has helped leadership roles in non-profit organizations. He's also the managing director of private family office Map2 Ventures, an investment fund with a broad portfolio of technology-centric businesses in the fields of fintech, um, AI and green tech. Welcome, welcome Mario. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you. Great pleasure to be here. I've got five questions for you. Shall we begin? Sure, let's go. <laughs> okay. It is said that innovation and creativity thrive in times of crisis. Is our travel and tourism industry witnessing enough of such existential uh, innovation? Uh, yes, we've seen tremendous amount of innovation throughout the, the last past year. Uh, but, but in reality, they're not truly innovations in the sense where it's something like a completely new invention. For the most part, there are actually technologies or services that were already ex in existence before the crisis, but what the crisis has done is accelerated their in implementation, uh, which in, in my opinion is a very good thing. It's a good thing for the industry, a uh, good thing uh, hopefully for our environment also, because many of them are in relation to sustainability, uh, but also a good thing for the consumers in the future, uh, hopefully making our life as we travel easier uh, when we all return to traveling again. Okay, um, are innovations for survival always a price exercise? Uh, you know, in other words, is innovation out of reach for SMEs that are already struggling with the cash flow uh, issue as a result of the crisis? Uh, certain technologies, yes, will be out of reach for SMEs. Uh, and uh, however, there, there's always an alternative. That's a good thing about innovation. Someone's developed something which is, uh, you know, looks very attractive and so seems uh, complex maybe for SMEs to implement. But there's always someone else coming up with a, a, a cheaper or less expensive alternative that people can accommodate. It's also the needs of the SMEs are quite different from, from a large corporate. Uh, if we simply look at new technologies, for example, of uh, digital payment, um, using QR codes for payments, it's been around in China for, for quite some time already. Uh, I was quite surprised last time I was in China going to, to market, wanted to buy an Apple, and they didn't accept cash. All I had is I had to use WeChat to scan the code. I didn't have WeChat, so I had to ask a friend to pay for me. Uh, but but um, uh, these innovations, as I said, they were already here. Uh, they're now being accelerated. Now, cost of implementation for something like this to an SME is relatively low. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so it's quite possible for uh, you know, businesses in travel and tourism that we will see in the future more uh, implementations of e-payments. As an example, there's many, many others. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Are you able to also speak about, um, you know, uh, tell us about the investor sentiments and opportunities in the travel and tourism space today? I, I've seen both extremes. Uh, so people will actually, you know, some investors will look at this current crisis and the state of the current tourism industry uh, and, and look at how long it will take to recover. Uh, we, we at PATA have talked about this many times before. Uh, our colleagues at WTTC or UNWTO and others have also stated the same thing, that we expect a very long recovery uh, till 2023, 2024 possibly. When I mean, what I mean by this is doesn't mean nobody will travel. It means that the recovery to the same level of growth that we had before. So when you think about this and you look at it as from an investor's point of view, say, hmm, a little risky, a little bit long term, uh, and I have to wait for my return for, for a longer time. Already travel and tourism pre-COVID-19 for most investors looked at it and say already as a risky business, mainly because the exit st strategies in travel and tourism are much, much smaller than any other sectors. However, you have others who look at it in a very bullish way and say, hey, if we invest today, we'll be the first one coming out of it and we'll make tons and tons of money. I think many of us have read over the last 48 hours the significant investment that Kluke has received yeah. uh, in, in, in multi, multi-million dollars, sizable amount of money, and a few other businesses in travel, KK Day and others who receive equivalent amount of money, uh, who have 
a very very bullish view of the future saying when it when it all starts we 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 want to be the one who going to you know control the tours and activities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which segment of our industry can do with more help and innovation for survival, and where can that help, you know, come from? You see, th this is a difficult question to answer. I mean, I, I, every part of the industry, to a certain degree, needs some help at the moment. But the but the the critical part is some is somehow difficult because it's not controlled by travel and tourism. Because in order for us to survive, to move forward, it's a health crisis. We need we need governments to accelerate the vaccination. We need governments to accelerate and improve the testing that protocols are actually in place, so that borders can reopen. That's the critical part. Without the borders being open, without the ability for people to travel, we don't have an industry as we had before. Um, we'll have to continue to focus for the time being, for the short term, on mostly domestic tourism and, to a certain degree, to regional tourism. Uh, as you know, routes and corridors start to reopen again. So you know there are multiple solutions to help the industry to you know ease the restart as we move forward. But those are the critical ones. You know when we talk about survival, that's the critical part that needs to be solved. And that's been mainly our focus here at Pata for for the last uh, few months. That's right. Okay, we hear a lot of the term uh, "build back better" in our industry's quest to bounce back from this pandemic and travel crisis. In your opinion, what do we need, uh, you know, to to really do to bring back, uh, to build back better, and what motivations or opportunities are there in the macro environment to help us move in this direction? I I do hope and I do believe that we need we need to build better than we were before. We have to think, you know, we have to look at this as an incredible opportunity for us to reinvent tourism in a much better way moving forward and what does that mean well it means a few things we had situations before where we had destinations who uh, were exceeding its capacity you know far far too many tourists concentration of tourists at certain times certain days or certain periods of the year um uh, for example where you had others were in the opposite where didn't have enough so how can we use the situation to do a better distribution of tourists moving forward and there's also the other component, which we all talk about for quite a lot, is sustainability, environmental sustainability, social impact also, and ensuring that actually we build in a way where we are more energy efficient, uh, we build in a way where uh, we protect our environment better than we did before. Um, and when we also, as I mentioned before, do a, a better distribution of the tourists across either a city, a province, a state, or even a country in, a certain, in certain cases. Uh, so we, we have this opportunity to build better. Um, however, you know, when we look at what happened in China when they reopened travel domestically, um, it was almost like uh, revenge travel. The amount of people that travel increased significantly, far, far greater than before, because people just want to escape. And then when we do surveys at the moment of the sentiment of people, people want to travel. They're desperate to go and travel again and explore the world. So I have a, a little suspicion that actually when we do reopen borders, we're going to get hit by enormous amount of travelers at, at, at the start. And then so we'll need to be careful in how we manage this to ensure we don't end up either in a situation that we were before or even in a worse situation. Worse. Yeah. Well, that's all the five questions we have for you, Mario. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. It's always right, a great pleasure. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to everyone, take care and stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode, yeah? Thank you so much, Mario. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.